Do you like to create unique backgrounds? Well, stick around because I've got two fun techniques to share with you today. It's time for another Take Two with Teresa Altenew and I've got two beautiful cards to share with you today. I'm going to be creating two backgrounds. This first one, I've actually got this arch hot foil plate from Altenew, but I want to make it into a window. And that means I want to create two separate pieces. I'm using my typical sandwich with the hot foil plate and some navy cardstock from Altenew. It's a really smooth cardstock and I've got the brushed gold hot foil. But you can use whatever supplies that you have. And if you're not sure of the sandwich with your machine, then simply just do a little test piece before you commit to a whole piece of paper and a whole piece of hot foil. Quick tip, make sure you allow the hot foil to cool down before removing it and reveal your gorgeous background. This is from the Spark Joy Sweet Greetings set. So to create my window, I actually hot foiled this same image twice and I used my trimmer to neaten up and cut down the edges. And then to create the window, yes, I just used a pair of scissors and I fussy cut <laughs> around the inside portion of both of my hot fold images. This was a little bit hard to see just because I did do it on that dark cardstock, but I just took my time and it's not perfect, but I think it turned out okay. So then I'm able to join my two pieces of cardstock together and that's going to give me a window and I can actually make this any size that I like. <laughs> now to decorate my card, of course, I need a sentiment. And I've got the Elegant Sayings stamp here. I'm using some Dark Night ink, which is a really dark blue ink. It's really pretty. And I can just cut that out with the coordinating die. I like to die cut the die a couple of times so I can layer it up and give it a little bit of strength because I do want to pop this sentiment up on the front of the card. I've also done some die cutting of the prickly pear. This is a beautiful flower that is a layering flower and has the key mechanism cut into the actual layers of the flower so it's really easy to lay up, even easier than they used to be because you can just line up the negative portion of the key and you know that your flower is going to look perfect but if you wanted to you can also add more petals or change it around to get a totally different look. Now I've brought the gold in again here, I actually die cut the final layer in some brushed gold and use some liquid glue to adhere all that together. Now this is slightly larger than a regular A2 card. So I didn't realize that initially, but I did come in and actually change the card base to a larger one after. I want my sentiment to sit a little bit lower on the right side of the card and the flower to sit higher. So that what I'm going to use them for is to cover where I've joined my two arches to create my window. And the liquid glue, I could have used that here, but I didn't want to take the chance of getting it onto the cardstock beneath. So I just used my tape runner because that's really very forgiving. And I know the pattern doesn't line up exactly, but my elements are going to cover that up. I did decide that I want to pop up my flower, so I added a little bit of well, it's a 110 pound cardstock behind it and then just use some foam tape and tape runner to adhere it all to the front of my card. I love that you could stretch this out and make a slimline card. This is a really beautiful hot foil background and you can add any image to this. If you didn't want to do the fussy cutting, you could actually just leave the center navy blue. The second technique that I want to share with you today is color blocking. I love to add bright colors and I like to block colors, but today I'm going on a bit of an angle. I like to get sort of a visual idea of how I want it to look before I commit. So I've got a piece of white scrap cardstock with an A2 window cut in it, and I can literally just move my cardstocks around until I'm happy with how it looks. I've got a piece of copy paper that's cut to the A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. Added some A4. This is one of the adhesive sheets from Altenew. This is a great product. I reach for it all the time. And then I can simply just use my cardstocks here. So what have I got? It's a bright pink cardstock from the Rose Petal set. I think it's the one that's called 
purple wine. Some of the navy cardstock, I'm bringing that in again. And then one of the blends. This is one of those paper packs from Alton New and it has nearly every colour family in it. And you can sort of use different portions. It's a great paper set, that one. It's often hard to get because it is so popular. Then I can just flip my whole panel over and use my scissors to cut it away. I'm not too worried that the edges aren't perfect because I am going to cut this down to fit on the front of my card with a border. So I've used the add-on die to create a die cut template of the bird and this is a stencil from the Spark Joy set and it actually stencils this beautiful bird. I think it's very similar to a bird that was released recently that was a die cut image. So if you're a stenciler or a die cut, you've got lots of options, but you can decorate this card however you please. The background is such a fun way to add a kind of modern element and you can really mix up the colors and, and make it your own. So I'm using the mini ink blending tool here. I'm actually finding that I'm reaching for this one the most now, especially if I want some bold color. I find I can really add a lot of color and depth with these blending tools and they're really easy to clean just on a piece of paper towel. So I pretty much have one for every color family, although I'm thinking about getting a few more so that I can have one, a lighter version and then a darker version. I hope that makes sense. All right, so this is where I use my template. I can line up where the die cut is going to happen and just make sure that I've got my stencil lining up correctly so that when I go to die cut it, it's going to die cut perfectly. I found this is particularly helpful when it came to the face of the bird and also where to place the legs. And you can see I made a mistake here. I accidentally colored the bird's eye orange. <laughs> Now it looks like evil bird. That was easy to fix though. I've got one of the fine liners and I literally just colored the eye in black. Probably should have waited for the ink to dry a little bit, but it did work out well because I came in and added a white dot to the center of the eye as well. I layered up a sentiment, which is from the Bold Greetings die set. I wanted to keep this quite modern looking and I did actually add a second layer of die cut to my bird because I wanted to pop it up and that 80 pound Nina just isn't sturdy enough, especially with all that ink added onto it. So I popped up my color blocked angled panel on the front of the card, added the sentiment with some liquid glue and then popped up the bird sitting on top of the word. I also added a couple of enamel dot hearts which were from the cherry blossom enamel dot set. I wish Alton knew would just make all the colors in the hearts and just put out a whole heart enamel dot set. If we all ask them all at once, I reckon they might do it for us. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below which card is your favorite today. If you did like today's cards, let me know by clicking on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? It's totally free. <laughs> I'll be back real soon with some more card inspiration. Until then, I've got two more videos here to share with you. I look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.